blessing because I'm in the coach. I'm blessing because we in the coach. I'm blessing because we in the coach. I'm blessing in the <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned into Jaja's Mike, home of the world's toughest leaders. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you. I'm excited today because I got a message for you all. Inspired by today's breath. Brought to you by Jesus Christ himself. I want us right now to just pause in a moment of gratitude and just take a deep breath. My leaders, you and I are here until we are no longer here. <laughs> Holy Spirit, let me speak about this. Let me speak about this. My leader, you and I are here today until we are no longer here. The other night I couldn't sleep because I kept thinking about an individual who I've been inspired by throughout the years. And it's the late Dr. Miles Monroe. If you haven't heard about him, he was a pastor, an author, motivational speaker. He was somebody that touched my life. Somebody I was immensely inspired by. Literally saved me through some of my darkest moments in my darkest seasons. And I just thought about it because at the age of 60, this is when Dr. Miles Monroe and a crew of nine people on a jet ended up not making it to the leadership conference that they put together. They didn't think they were gonna lose their life that day, but they did. And it, it, it touched my spirit so deeply that it made me realize, although this happened in the past, I had to think to myself, you and I are here until we're no longer here anymore. And what also inspired that thought was a friend of mine who I call my Guadena, which in Ethiopia means friend. Her birthday's today. <laughs> And this woman has been allowing me to see many things about myself and has been pushing me in new ways that I never thought I would be pushed. And she sent me this book. It's called The Fatherhood Principle. And it's by Dr. Miles Monroe once again. And I keep thinking about all the books Dr. Miles Monroe has written in his lifetime. It's like his spirit and his energy is still here. Matter of fact, a friend of mine who just found out said, you know what, Jai, it feels like his energy is still here, his presence. And this is what I want to speak about today. You and I are here until we're no longer here. This day right now is precious. The word continues to tell us Take no thought for tomorrow, for today has enough problems of its own. In some translations, the word problems is actually the word worries, concerns, things that make you overthink. <laughs> the desire and the need to do critical thinking today. How can we make it past today? And not just in this message from a space of survival, but from a space of purpose. My leader, you and I are here until we're no longer here anymore. And I've been thinking to myself, dang, Lord, I've been, I've been holding off on so many things. I've started writing my book, my life coaching book. Then I, I've cut it off. Then I cut it back on. Then I cut it off. Because I expect it to, to literally be here tomorrow. I expect to be here Next week, I'm, I'm spoiled in my ideology of thinking and in that 
place of being spoiled, I get less done. And not that this life we live in is a marathon, but I get less done. I'm privileged in my thinking. I just assume that tomorrow is given. My leader, I'll be here until I'm no longer here. This gives me a fire to ask the question, why are you still holding things off? What are you doing? Not everybody was granted in this lifetime 60 years, 80 years, 120 years, some 15 years. We are blessed right now to do this breathing exercise. Take one breath with me. That's a privilege. That's a privilege. Why? Because we're here today until we're no longer here. My lead, I'm speaking to you right now. I was reading a verse in scripture and I said, God, how can I connect it with this message? And Proverbs 27 verse seven, it says, one who is full Lopes honey from the comb But to the hungry Even what is bitter Tastes sweet One who is full What is this fullness we speak of One who is full One who is in the process Of continuously Loving themselves Giving love to themselves And not just in any worldly way But loving themselves in a divine manner Loving themselves the way Jesus Christ has called them To love on themselves It's the full love of God Transformation In all areas The receiving of love and the giving of love It's a fullness Where you just feel Good like I'm, I don't need Nobody else I'm good on my own <laughs> You're full, you just ate. You don't need another french fry. You don't need to go back for seconds. You just kinda, ooh, I'm good. And it says, one who is full, right? So one who is good, one who feels complete in Jesus Christ and in his singleness, in her singleness, in God alone, lotes honey from the comb. The word lotes, it means hates. One who is full hates honey from the comb. My leader. You're probably asking, okay, why would one who is full hate honey from the comb? Well, if you understand how honey is made, you'll see that honey, we ain't talking about organic honey. Honey that's been in its container that is sold to you and I is manipulated. It's filtered. It's processed so you get this sweet taste that's not as bitter as the thing that hasn't been refined so next verse says but the hungry even what is bitter tastes sweet even what is bitter tastes sweet not what is better what is bitter tastes sweet and I gotta ask the question With your level of hunger and your level of desire, what is it that you are settling for because of your lack of fullness in Jesus Christ? What is it that is bitter that you're eating right now that needs the patience of being processed? The patience of being refined. The patience of being manipulated. The Bible always talks about God who is the potter and we as the clay. There's a process of manipulation that's taking place. We come out refined. <laughs> My leader, you and I are here until we're no longer here. 
And this poses the question. This poses the question. Holy Spirit, let's speak. My leader, watching this video today. Are you settling for a life? that doesn't provide complete fullness. It's not whole. And has your starvation and being hungry allow you to find comfort in a good feeling in something that's merely a settlement. Are you living a life that's a mere settlement? This is about purpose. Are you settling for a season that's not purposeful? Are you in relationships that are not, they're bitter. They leave a bad taste in your mouth, but you kind of like, mm. Like every time you talk to the person or you're chilling with the individual or maybe you're doing the work or you're doing the assignment or you're going to the job, whatever it is, it's just like you consume it and it just leaves this feeling that it ain't really up to par, but you're going to take it because why? You're hungry. You have not reached the fullness of Jesus Christ. My leaders, I'm speaking to you. This is a very spiritual message. We're not talking about food, man. We're not talking about starving in the world. We're talking about starving from your spiritual foundation. This is to get you back to Jesus Christ. The fullness of worshiping Jesus. The fullness of knowing that every day is a blessing. The fullness that if we go towards his richness, we will be able to do things that we typically wouldn't do. We're going to be full. We're not going to desire the honey from the honeycomb, the things that are unprocessed, unrefined, the things that are not fully manipulated and being formed in the image of Jesus Christ, the opportunities that are not for you. We're not settling for bitterness even in a pandemic, my leader. Speaking to you. I'm speaking to you because you've been, you've been coming back to these videos. I'm speaking to you because this may be your first time watching a Jaja's Mike video. And I'm speaking directly to your soul. Because why? You understand that I'm speaking to your situation directly. And how I know? Because right now you're being convicted. And you're literally pointing out areas in your life where you have been settling because you're starving and you're hungry. And your wholeness hasn't been in reading the word or praying to God every day. Your wholeness has been in other things. The substance, the people, the man, the woman. Whatever it is. The show. The drug. The drink. You're settling for bitterness. And I'm here to wake you up. <laughs> My leader. He who is full, loathes, hates, detests honey from the honeycomb. For only the hunger likes what is bitter. This is a message to be full, my leaders. My leaders, one thing about Dr. Miles Monroe that I recognize, and while we can still feel his spirit, his spirit was so full that he was overflowing with content he was overflowing with love he had so much of it even after his departure we are still feeling the love and the fullness of dr miles monroe it's still changing generations and generations and generations of lives with his teaching his spiritual counsel his leadership material his preaching is still filling us with fuel. Some of you all don't know Dr. Miles Monroe. I get it. Check his stuff out. If you like my content, you're going to love his content. 
That fullness is a richness. That fullness literally it makes you it makes you come up to something that's bitter, and it's like mm, now you can decide. You're not you're not kind of you're not coming from a place of desperation, but you can now look at it and see if this thing is compatible. We can't see the things that are compatible for us in the midst of being hungry. For the hungry, the word says, desire the things that are bitter and the bitter things to them are sweet. You're deceived. If you're coming from a place that's not full, you'll be deceived. Don't try to start that business if you're not full. Don't try to get into that relationship if you're not full. You'll get into something for a state that is, now I get it, thank you, McLeet. Woo! You'll get into the thing because it's a space of fear. You're trying to feel the fear of starvation. When we're hungry, there's only one space next that we're thinking about. We're hungry, so we're plummeting. And so if we don't feel this urge of starvation, what is that? We think death. That's what we're thinking about. And for many of us, it's just, it's not an actual death. It's just literal demise. A place that you don't think you can literally handle. It's too much. It's overwhelming. It's a burden. It's failure. So in order to fail and not have to go through life with this feeling, I'm going to settle for the things that are bitter. And I'm going to manipulate myself to make myself believe that this thing is sweet when you know it's not sweet. I'm speaking to you. My leaders, seek first the kingdom. This message is a call to go back to one who is full. Let's not skip this. We got to go back to one that is full. Many of us have great content to create far greater than Dr. Miles Monroe. In fact, many of us have stuff to do far greater than Jesus Christ himself. He says in his word, you and I will do greater things than even he. Who? Meaning, he sends the Holy Spirit and we are made full as we continue to meditate and get in his word and fast and pray. We're called to do greater works. That means we are living in a place of fullness. You are so full. That is a call and a commandment and a promise that I promise you, you'll be so full in me that you'll be able to do great works. You'll be so full in me that when you start your ministry, when you start using your gifts, it's going to make you full. You'll do greater works than me. It's going to heal people. It's going to literally remove the shackles from the blind. You're going to give people power. You're going to give people energy. You're going to be able to inspire people. You're going to be able to heal leprosy. You're going to be able to cure depression. No diseases and these weapons form against you shall prosper. My leader, you and I are here like Jesus Christ until we're no longer here. Meaning we got to live this life with purpose. And I know the question, here's the question. But ja, oh, damn, I don't know what my gift is, man. I don't know what my purpose is. Stop talking about purpose and I don't even know what my gift is, man. I get it. I hear the argument. I know. But let me add, let me let me give this little example to you. God has given us a compass. He gives us conviction. We use words like I had a gut feeling. We use words like and phrases like my intuition. My intuition told me this. I had a gut feeling that felt like this. People like me, it's like, yo, the Holy Spirit said this. Like God gives us this, these feelings. They're not just there when we eating our favorite chocolate cake. When we, you know, we got, it's, it's crawfish season. 
you know, and we just, we feeling good. Somebody loves us and we feeling good. No, man, we got feelings that give us a compass to what's morally right and what's incorrect. God has given us a compass to be full. And the more we can go towards his word and understanding for our life, the more we're in tune with the things that are bitter. The more I am refined in Jesus Christ, the more I can see if the honey that's in front of me has been manipulated, refined, right, or processed. I can see your process of growth, the more I see my process of growth. This is how leaders like Dr. Miles Monroe are able to touch like you and I. This is how an individual like Jesus Christ is able to heal you and I. He sees our deficiencies because of his efficiency in the Father God. I'm able to better coach my clients when I'm working on myself, when I'm loving myself, when I'm reading and I'm studying and I'm giving love and I'm receiving love. I'm able to help coach at a level that I've never seen before. Why? Because I'm loving myself. I'm patching up my wounds. I'm getting rid of things that I'm afraid of, but I'm owning up to my fears and not making decisions out of a broken space, but a decision in a place of fullness. When I am coaching, I believe that I am full and I can give. I am full and I can help God process and transition and, and refine the individuals that he's called me to coach. My leaders, I'm here until I'm not here anymore. You are here until you're no longer here. That's why I told God, I said, God, I'm finally finna start at least two to three pages of the day. So before my birthday, I'll finish my first book. My first book of many. I've been writing it since I was in New York City. It's time for this book to finally be published so it can help people. Why? Because I don't know how long I have on this earth and I need to stop taking this, this breath for granted. My leader, you are here until you're no longer here. I want you to do this leadership challenge. And in today's leadership challenge, I want you to take out a sheet of paper like I always ask us to do. Writing is a psycho neuromotor activity which causes us to focus. It helps us probe. It gets us to dive deeper. A lot of us have spiritual revelation while writing. Many people hear from God through just writing alone. I invite you to participate in this exercise and maybe even send me a screenshot to my email or my Instagram. And I want you to write down on this paper, Holy Spirit, thank you. Am I full? Or am I hungry? <laughs> am I full? Or am I hungry? And on each column, I want y'all to put this in a column. Write down reasons why you believe you are full. Write down these reasons. And I, now... I want you to write down the reasons why you may be hungry. What are you starving? You may be starving for income. You may be starving for, for a relationship, for love, for marriage. You may be starving in these areas. I want you to, when you write this side of starvation, you're not comparing the two, but when you write this, this is what you need to surrender to Jesus Christ. You got to surrender. You got to pray over these things because if you don't, it's going to be difficult for you to find wholeness in this area. You're going to be thirsting. You're going to be hungry. So anything that offers this stimulation of love, marriage, financial opportunities, you're going to manipulate yourself and engage in a situation that's bitter. It's not sweet. It's not an opportunity that came from God. It's because you're hungry. Am I hungry? Or am I full? My leaders, let's pray. 
Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we humbly come before you in all gratitude. Father, we thank you for everything you continue to do in our lives, for everyone you continue to place in our environment, for the peace that you allow us to experience on a daily, for the breath that you give us in our lungs. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask to continue to be able to surrender the ways of the flesh and the desires that are not of you, Lord. We surrender them to you. Father God, we want to be full in your word. We want to be full in the presence of the Holy Spirit, Father, so that we are not thirsting for the things that you have called us not to thirst over, not to take no thought over, not to overthink. Father, heal and cover my leader listening to this prayer today under the sound of my voice. Father God, allow them to feel your Holy Spirit. Allow them to be lifted up into a place of new encouragement, a place that feels full. Father God, show these leaders how to remain full in Jesus Christ. Allow them to continue to go towards you, the source, the only thing worth worshiping. The only person who could love us 24 hours of the day, hour at the hour, minute by the minute, second by the second. Father God, we surrender our thirst to you today. God and my leaders, Father, protect my leaders. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. My leaders, surrender it to God. Go towards feeling full before making your decisions and I'm a firm believer that your life will be changed we are mm -hmm.